Before you begin, disconnect the ground terminal from the battery and make sure it cannot accidentally make contact with it while working. Begin by safely jacking up and supporting your car. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video if you need additional assistance with that task. With the car safely off the ground, you'll need to remove the engine trays. There are four T25 torque bolts, yellow arrows, holding the tray on. Remove them and slide the tray back out of the friction clips, red arrow on the front air dam. This photo illustrates where the plate connects to the two side shields, red arrows. There is an access hole on the left side shield, red arrow, that you can access the drain plug from. Or if you want to remove the shield, it is held in place by friction at the front and a speed clip on the frame rail, yellow arrow. With the tray removed, you will see the radiator drain plug, red arrow, and the spigot, yellow arrow, on the lower front of the car. Place a catch bucket or tray under the plug and open the drain plug. The fluid drains out of a small spigot facing downward. Drain the radiator completely. Open the fluid reservoir, red arrow, to break the vacuum and assist in draining. Disconnect the hose from the lower right side of the radiator. This is a quick disconnect fitting. Lift up the retaining pin, yellow arrow, and wiggle the connection off the radiator outlet. Make sure you install a new gasket before reinstallation. On the top left side of the engine are two small covers over the radiator hose. They are held in place by four Phillips head screws, red arrows. Remove these. Remove the radiator hose clamp and hose, red arrow. Remove the Bowden cable from the hood latch, yellow arrows. Next you will need to remove the front bumper, the lock carrier, the headlights and the grill from the vehicle. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with those tasks. With everything removed, remove the eight T30 torque screws that hold the radiator, AC condenser, and accessories to the lock carrier. Working under the car, remove the lower hose from its clip. In the lower left corner of the radiator, disconnect the three electrical connections, yellow arrows. Next, remove the T30 torque screw, yellow arrow, holding the AC bracket to the radiator. Move back to the top side of the engine and disconnect the electrical connection on the right front of the lock carrier, yellow arrow. With all this done, remove the two, one on each side, red arrow, T30 torque bolts securing the lock carrier to the front fender supports. Gently slide the lock carrier, AC condenser, and radiator forward and off the car. The AC lines are still connected, so you will have to be prepared to support the AC condenser and radiator when you remove the lock carrier, red arrow. You will now be able to separate the fan, shroud, and radiator, red arrow, from the condenser, leaving the condenser attached to the vehicle. This photo illustrates where the AC lines remain intact, yellow arrows. Make sure to clean all of the debris caught between the radiator and condenser before you reinstall them. Separate the shroud from the radiator by removing the four T30 torque screws, yellow arrows, holding it together. If you need to replace anything associated with the fans, now is a very good time to do that. If you are just replacing the radiator, you will need to remove all the accessories. There are four mounts, yellow arrow, one shown, that need to be transferred along with the upper hose connection, red arrow. The upper hose connection removes the same way the lower connection did. You will also need to transfer over the temperature sensor, red arrow, for the fans. Before you put everything back together, you might want to give some thought to doing any other jobs on the car where you would have limited access to the front of the engine. Installation is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.